Hey, what's up guys? I've been having a lot of people ask what is left on old Hell on Wheels here. I got the build done, but if you own a Jeep, you know a Jeep is never done. So we're gonna talk about what I got left to do to kind of fine tune this thing. Yeah, so anyway, thanks for tuning in. This is Flawed Off-Road, and we're gonna talk about the first gripe that I have about my build, and it's to do with the steering. So let's take a look at what we got. When I got this axle, it came with these Arctic high steer arms, and I wanted to get both steering links up there, but there's a little bit of interference issues, and that's why I haven't done it yet. And I've tried a few different things. I actually switched to a Wagoneer drop pitman arm because it's longer, and you kind of want that length to equal the length from your upper ball joint to here. And so now that matches, but I'm still getting a little bit of bump steer and a little bit of death wobble. And I actually suspect that the culprit is these one inch lift shackles. It's got this pinion kind of tipped up a little bit. And so I'm going to shorten these from six inch long to five inch long. And I'm hoping that fixes the caster angle a little bit and helps out with that. And if not, then I'm just gonna continue chipping away, trying different things to figure it out. Secondly, I need to build a bumper. I have this swing out, it's a Dirtworks bumper. It got really loose to the point where I had to like tie it into the tailgate to keep it from shaking and ripping off of there. And I think I'm just gonna repair it and sell it because I'm not gonna run the 37 inch spare on here. I'll just keep the spare out on the trailer. So I think what I'm gonna do is build a bumper that's basically exactly like this one, but just without the spindle on it. And I have all the tubing and everything I need to do that already. And that's actually gonna be one of my future videos. You can see there's the main piece of it right there. And that's quarter wall. It's actually heavier than the one that was on it. So the next thing I wanna talk about is these rear shocks. They are way too stiff, but I was on a time crunch and these were the only things I could find that were long enough. They're a dang near 15 inch travel because of the way I did these, I outboarded these shock towers and I put those pretty low on the axle tube and they're meant for like an F350 or something. And they are just way too stiff and the rear right is pretty harsh right now. So I've been meaning to kind of figure out what my weight is gonna be back here and then call up Bill Stein or something and try to get some better rear shocks. Okay, so another one of the little things, it's not too high up on the list, but it's just little cosmetic things. I had repaired um, this area once before, but it's getting a little bit of rust bubbling through and I had, when I ripped the liners out of here, I had painted this like probably seven years ago and it's chipping off. So it's just little cosmetic things around the Jeep that I wanna work on, but it's just not that high up on the priority list when there's so much other stuff to do, you know? See that gear wheel right there? Supposedly this thing had brand new gears and it had a brand new seal installed in it when I got it. Well, yeah, you can see that's not working out so well. So I need to tear this apart and put that little seal in the tube right there, which it's quite a bit of work and that's why I'm just kind of putting it off and making sure I'm topped up on oil. So another thing that I want to do is put a front locker in this thing. It came with a Yukon Sure Grip, which is like a true track. And it works okay. I get some one tire fire. You can make it work better if you play with the brake pedal, but that's another reason why I'm not dealing with this axle seal because I figured I would wait and see if I buy a locker and just do it all at the same time. So the next thing I need to do is get under here and just retorque everything, the U-bolts, the drive shaft bolts. I've probably put five, 600 miles on this thing and two wheeling trips and there's a lot of stuff that I need to go around and check the torque on and make sure everything's staying together and that no jam nuts are coming loose and stuff like that. And I just kind of haven't done it yet. So I made some bump stop extensions up front, but I never got around to making them back here. To be honest, I don't know if I'm even gonna need them. I was worried about this axle and the truss coming up and hitting the fuel tank, which as you can see, I modified the shit out of it to get some extra clearance, but so far it hasn't even rubbed it and that's without having any bump stop extensions. So for now, I think I'm just gonna leave it until it becomes a problem. So you might've saw in another video that I did a little really quick onboard air system. I can't point with that little compressor and I put this little air tank under the seat to run my rear locker and be able to air up my tires and all that. Well, guess what? 
I was using this compressor for something else and I ran it too long and I smoked it already and I have a feeling it had something to do with the heat under the hood. So I went to the junkyard and I picked up the Sabin factory air conditioning compressor and I'm gonna do a belt drive onboard air system. So that's gonna be pretty cool and I'll probably do a video on that. So stick around, stay tuned and keep your eye out for that. Another thing I wanna do is wiring gremlins. This thing came with some kind of shoddy wiring on it and then when I redid this build, I kind of unhooked a lot of stuff. I got rid of some stuff and I didn't get rid of all the wiring. So there's like bundles of wiring tied up in here that I haven't done anything with. You can see the relay setup that I did for the compressor, which isn't too bad. I mean, at least I fused it and relayed it, but I want to get that loomed up and some of this crap on the firewall. I just want to get this all cleaned up. It was kind of just done in a rush. It's all fused and relayed, but it just looks crappy. So as far as the inside of my Jeep, I did get these speaker pods, but I kind of want to get some of those canned speakers, like the wake speakers up here, because you can barely hear these. They just basically point right into the seat. I have a CB and I really want to get a GMRS. A lot of people are switching to that. I'll probably keep the CB, but I definitely want to get one of those. And maybe I'll just get one of them handheld ones that I can mount up here somewhere. I also want to finish wiring up my rock lights because yeah, I had a couple of them wired and then they were in the way. The wiring, that's kind of part of that wiring I said that I unhooked. And I had others that I just never got hooked up like right there this wire there's actually a rock light down there and I wouldn't mind getting that finished up so if you didn't know I did an AW4 transmission swap which it came out of a Comanche or a Cherokee I can't remember um and if you look down here so that's a transmission computer I had to wire that into the ECM and now I didn't need to use the uh, console shifter because my Jeep was already an automatic I switched from the three speed the problem that I have is I've got low, two, and drive. And that's the same number of clicks that the AW4 has, but low is first and second combined. Two is actually three. So I can't pick first or second gear, but you can wire a switch into that computer and kind of just tell it you can flip it up for first or down for second. And because sometimes it's helpful to just stay in a particular gear. And if you have it down in low, it'll kind of shift when you don't want it to. So yeah, I really want to do a full walk around video on this thing. I've been planning a place and a location and all kinds of stuff, but it's just not done. I want to get it further done. I want to get some things cleaned up and some kinks worked out and stuff before I really do an in-depth walkthrough of everything. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching this. Uh, if you liked it, check some of these videos out and I'll see you next time.